Well, hi and welcome to my shop here today. It's January 22nd and we're expecting a lot of snow here today. Maybe even as much as half a meter of snow is going to fall here today. So, Okay, now I'm going to focus on one critical problem that was identified through all this testing. Actually, it showed, kind of showed up repeatedly, of course. And that is the uh, missing 10 volts that should be available from the power supply, but in fact, is turning out to be one volt or even less. Um, so I was working on this uh, terminal strip here. And what I did was I got out my colored pencils and I penciled in red all the things that are running at, supposed to be running at 10 volts on here. It's a little hard to see in the camera, but what I hadn't realized when I was working on this is that a lot of these terminals are joined by wires and the wires are shown drawn along here in this diagram and it just didn't pick up on it so this one in red here is carrying the 10 the minus 10 volts all over the place so the minus 10 is derived from 51 volts with a two resistor voltage divider to to bring out the 10 volts it's right here there it is 51 coming in, 10 at this point, this is grounded zero. Uh, but this 10 is actually only one or even less. And the 51 is 71. The voltage coming in is way high. The voltage coming in is high, the voltage going out is low. Sounds like, sounds like something's not drawing current or something like that. Uh, I traced out this, this line here a fair bit basically it goes to grids. Basically it's it's a non-current drawing line. It's just it's just going to, to grids. I'll have to look at it again though. Uh, everything's kind of preliminary. Wait a minute. This line goes to zero. Okay, so there is another wire. There's another wire that won't be shown here that's coming out and heading off. Actually it's heading this way <laughs> through the radio. Sort of. So anyway, uh, there we are. Oh yeah, the other thing that seemed to be out of sorts is here it states you should find 35,000 ohms here on this line and I found 100,000 ohms on the same line that's right in the same area is it all part of the same thing and these two resistors I have tested numerous times they are pretty much exactly what they're supposed to be I can't remember right now what that is so I'm gonna start right at square one I've got my voltmeter hooked up set to 750 volts AC and I'm gonna read the high voltage output of the power supply transformer and see if it isn't what it's supposed to be. It's uh, two windings uh, at 305 volts each, so together there's 610. This should say 610 volts. Uh, and well, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. So, is the radio ready to go on? I don't need to hear anything, don't need the volume up don't need anything in any particular position here, I don't think. So the radio's ready to come on. As soon as I apply a bit of power here. Right okay, through, through the dim bulbs. Watch this meter. It's a little interesting. We can compare the line voltage to the uh, output, the high voltage output. Watch your hands now, Jimbo. High voltage down here. Uh, I kind of, kind of left these just laying out here. I put my hand on it pretty easy. Let's just do something cheap and dirty here. I'll put a piece of paper over them. Okay. Because uh, you do not want to touch those. So settling in at uh, 450 when the voltage supplied to the radio is 82 volts only. It's only 82 volts. Okay, uh, so we're going to give it the full treatment here. So what we're looking for is 610. We're getting 635. The voltage on the plug at this point is 118 volts. So that's really what's coming out of that transformer. Now, can that possibly that can't possibly explain 51 becoming 71? This is a small percentage increase here. So 
So, uh, so that test is over. Shut the power right off. Pull these out. And I like sticking my fingers in that part of the radio. Okay. So, as unlikely as it was, uh, as it would be, the transformer is not in trouble. It's fine. So we need to look at the circuit and uh, why would we even bother it uh, so I can so I can think better. Let's look at the uh, circuit here. Okay, so what we're interested in is this part here. Let's zoom in on it. It's not complicated. There's nothing too much to it really. So, so I've checked these two resistors, uh, they're correct, these I've corrected, this one I replaced, I corrected this one to 82, this one's 82, um, I, you know, I don't, what can happen with a 6AL5, I, 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 it would generate more voltage out here, just lost as to what, what could happen. You would think that the voltage arriving here would be a pretty uh, uninterfered with voltage from the rest of the radio. Um, I guess you, you could try if you're dragging current through here. I guess you would you would drag the voltage down a bit here. checked all these resistors. I've checked the wiring all through here. Replace these capacitors. Get 71 volts there. 71.72. Could it could it could it be a problem in here? Like there's a minus one. What are the chances I flip these wires somehow? go off in divergent places in the radio. So if they're going to be flipped, they have to be flipped where they're close together. Are they close together right in here? Are they, uh, are they so, um, so I did replace one switch in this radio and I'm pretty sure it's the uh, modulation switch. The CW modulation switch. Nothing to do with any of this stuff. I think. Well, here it is here. Could I have made a mistake with this? Because I remember thinking to myself I was stunned when it all seemed to work again. <laughs> I wasn't fully reassured I'd done it right. So, yeah, you know what, this this does... This, this little, what's that, a little tiny... Uh, well, it's a big capacitor here. So the radio is normally in modulation setting. That's where it is now. The modulation setting. Well, we'll have to assume that off this is open and on it's closed. So if you, so so normally this is open, so this is going nowhere. So so the wire from over here is just dead ending on the switch, unless I wired it wrong. Um, well, what what wrong could I do? So I can do all kinds of wrong. So I I could get on here. And that comes over to 150 volt supply. Ooh. And I flip this around and be jamming 150 volts back this way. Uh, uh, you know, this is, this is a hundred, this is a regulated 150 volts here. Most of it would have to drop somewhere. Or, or something rather exciting would happen. So if you close this switch, now that it's fed back here, yeah, I, I don't, you know, I'll have to check it, I'll have to check it. Uh, 
uh, but if, if, if that were happening, I think I think lots of bad things would happen. Uh, it become pretty obvious pretty fast. So then we have this guy. Now, can this guy? He's he's also on the ABC line, 3.3 mega ohms. Is it really? And that would tie it back to here, which would tie it to here, which would supply some voltage, but it would vary. It done something stupid here, turning this would 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 have some effect in AVC, and I know it doesn't have any effect. I'm not gonna be able to just think my way through this. I'm gonna have to literally trace this thing through wire by wire, step by step. I'm pretty curious about getting this wrong. Okay, uh, I'm going to spend a little time on my own just going through some of these ideas and looking at the radio and uh, hunting around in there. And if I find something really exciting, I will be excited. I think I have something here to work my way through. And I think my problems with my radio are maybe related to this area that I'm circling now. Um, I did replace this switch uh, years ago. And for the life of me, as I look at the radio, I cannot find this resistor. I think I left it out. Supposedly, the location of this resistor, you can see it on this diagram, somewhere. So this is the um, rotating RF control. And this is the switch on the front panel right here for switching not to AVC, but it's actually CW modulation switch. Maybe I've got things a little confused here. This is switch eight. Yeah, they, the, the way they're showing them here is is, ba is backwards physically to how they are. Um, just confused me a little bit. This is the switch I replaced. This switch is the original one. S eight. Let's just be sure about that. S eight. S eight. S, yeah, it looks like SB, but it's S8 here. And the other switch uh, is not right in this area, it's somewhere else. Okay, um, so this resistor is supposed to be sitting visible, I guess, whoops, down here right on the switch. It's mounted, it shows it mounted right on switch 8. Switch 7 has four wires. Switch 7 should be the, uh, the, uh, yeah, okay, let's, um, sorry for all the partial thoughts here, but I just got too much racing through my head while I'm doing this. Racing right through and out the other end. Um, you can see the close-up camera is looking right in here. These are the two switches I'm curious about. This is modulation CW. It's the one I replaced. This one's uh, original switch. And uh, I, think, I think this one's original, as I pointed out before in my radio. This one's original. This one's been replaced by somebody somewhere along the line, I think. It's actually is this different. Uh, it's not spring loaded. And this is the one I did. The resistor should be down here. So let's look with the uh, close-up camera and see see if it really appears. Because I haven't seen it yet. Oh, there it is. Wait a minute. Is that a, yeah, that's a resistor there. Wow. That's a resistor? Yeah, yeah, I guess it is, yeah. Okay, we can see the value on it. This looks like something I did. It does not have the look of a Hammerland thing, but I have no recollection of getting in there. Lots of wires, and they're all fraying. This is what I was mumbling about uh, a video or two ago. And that and these wires, whenever you work with them, they fray out, and then you can't see anything. Okay, so the resistor's there. At least there is a resistor 
between this terminal did I, did I make some stupid mistake here it's very hard to trace this stuff through a big radio like this with wires running everywhere and they're also you know they're bundled they, they go into bundles like this and good luck using the color code to try to sort it out and they've all taken a bit of damage here aren't they? Very, just on the outside though I think but, you know, good luck tracing that stuff. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to use my ohm meter and I'm going to make tests that will prove, you know, this end of the wire is the the end of the same wire somewhere else. <laughs> that's not quite. That's not quite how you say that, is it? But I'll poke around here and just see what I can find out about this whole arrangement, study everything. Okay, so here's where I've gotten to. Uh, I think there's a chance the switch I put in is miswired. Uh, it's just because I did it, and it's easy to get this stuff wrong. Pretty hard to check it out, but I'm going to have to try to prove that this switch is wired correctly. But surprisingly enough, this all plays into the beat frequency oscillator. And what I uh, learned about that, I'll show it to you. The bottom of the uh, oscillator circuitry is in here, but way, way back in there. And I turn this around. There is a can right here. Pretty tight spot in here. I got to get rid of this to take this can and lift it up. I have the feeling I may have skipped that when I did the capacitors. I may have not done the capacitor. That is in that can. That's right. There's one in that can. Let's take a look here. So here's the uh, switches down here I'm concerned about. And here is the transformer, the beat frequency circuitry right here. This is looking basically into the bottom of the radio, but we need to look at what's in this can. And if we look on the schematic, this is what I realized while I was studying these resistors and the switch. I suddenly picked up on the fact that there's a dotted line going around there, like this. And that's marking out transformer T6 which is the beat frequency oscillator can <laughs> I guess I can call it. Uh, inside that can are all these parts including that guy. If this guy were to short you put a ground right on that terminal. If this resistor really is 47k then if I took a resistance reading on that terminal of the switch I would see 47k guess what if I take a reading on that terminal as best I can figure out that's the right terminal 47k is what I see suggests this capacitors uh, shorted and it's in this can so I, I don't even know for sure if I changed it previously I don't even know what it's like trying to get into that can so that's my objective. I'm going to lift that can, look inside. I have trouble with the beat frequency oscillator. Right now, if you remember the last time I operated the radio, there was this, a tone coming out of it. It was from the, this oscillator. Yeah, but I had this, this adjustment here, the uh, BFO injection maximized. Maybe that's why it was howling, but there's more, more trouble in here. Um, so i got to get that can off. That's the bottom line. So these cans are, uh, let me just put a plug out here, just to be absolutely sure. There be no power in the radio. So these usually have, like you can see up on this one, they have screws down at the bottom holding it. And it looks like I have to remove this mechanism, this is just a linkage that controls which uh, uh, crystal you're selecting. So I don't even use this. I have to open these up, get it off, and uh, yeah, there's a bunch of screws way down on the bottom there. Hopefully I don't have to do this. This is the delta tune for the crystals. I can, I can leave that right in place. I'm willing to bet I skipped this one because I know myself. I'll bet you when I get that open, in there is going to be either a paper capacitor or a whole bumblebee. Okay, that's going to take quite a while, so I'm going to just do it on my own. 
yeah, often I say on my videos, I'll just go ahead and do this, and then, uh, then I run the cameras in case something funny happens. Funny, haha. -ha. my shop really nicely and of course I can't find the smallest Allen keys to go in there so couldn't do that instead I took the screw out this this little uh, screw and pin here and separate that I should allow this to come right out like so get this off slide it out of the way of the can Okay, step one, I gotta get it. So I gotta get uh, get this can out of here now. Oh boy, the fun never stops. Okay, two screws. straight up. How are you going to get past this? There's, there's, there's no play. It's got to come straight up. Take, if I can get this out here. I don't know what's going on right in there. I don't think I can get this out. This whole thing? Oh my gosh. Okay, back to looking at the uh, manual. Never taken that off. I've never been interested in this part. I don't even keep a tube in here. This is the uh, crystal part, and I, I just have made no use of it. I think I have one crystal now like I could put in here. But, uh, you know, save a tube, uh, save the uh, heater current. No use operating tubes that you're not actually uh, utilizing. Well, I better study up on the manual about how to take this can apart here. When I originally uh, purchased this radio, the BFO was not working in it. And I think I mentioned that the BFO had been damaged in a kind of a classic way by uh, spinning this control past its stop pins, breaking the stop pins off of them, and then turning it around and around. You're actually rotating the coil inside this can. And so I managed to get this can off and repair that coil. Oh, how did I do it? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was a long, long, long time ago. And I remember it was a uh, really tough job. But I don't remember how I did it because there's just, there's just no play in this. And that's it. That's why <laughs> I wonder. I'm just wondering. The, uh, the, the transformer that, that's inside the can is uh, mounted with some screws. I'm just going to stick my camera in here. If you look way in the back there, on the bottom, you can 
It's a uh, big flathead screw right in the middle. I can see two of them actually right in the middle of those terminals. Those are the transformer terminals and those two flathead screws are holding the transformer. What I need to do is release all those wires on the bottom, release these screws, and the whole thing will be loose then. I can lift the whole shebang out. Why? <laughs> because I, I need to change the capacitor. It pretty much has to come out anyway. So I think I think that's the route. We do do those screws. You know the problem with that is sometimes those screws go into nuts. They, those ones probably don't. They go into nuts. You know, they get get the trouble. Uh, and you go to try to put them back in. Uh, okay, I'll leave the camera rolling here. I'm excited about doing this. Oh, I have to take all those wires off. Okay, okay, stop, stop the camera. Cut, cut. When I uh, installed these capacitors, I accidentally blocked the entrance into this area. And I think I need all the space I can get. So I'm going to uh, just lift this. So we just can't kind of, yeah, good. Just swing it out of the way. Good show. Somehow, somehow out of the way. Good. Okay, so I have access all the way in there now. There's many, many connections. Oh boy. Okay, away I go. Okay. There it is with all the wires desoldered. I took a nice photograph before I took the uh, wires off, but the wires will pretty much stay where they're going to go. They're not going to go anywhere really. Hope this works. This must have been what I did so many years ago. Maybe I can grab it. Let's see if I can grab it. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll go around the other side. Everything is, is free here and loose. Nothing stuck, eh? No, nothing stuck. Okay, around. back over. Getting a little messy in here. Okay, can we, can we get this out? It's a game of millimeters here. out of here more. There we go. That's better. That can is off. Now this coil should come right out, shouldn't it? What's holding it? What's it? Oh, it's Whoa, 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 Jimbo, Jimbo, Jimbo. There's another whole control here, the Delta Tune, which is feeding right into, right into it. Uh-oh. Uh, hmm. Okay, so I've got another couple of really small set screws to get there. Wow. 
Wow. Way in there. There you can see one now moving back and forth. That's one I gotta get to. God, this looks too big. How am I gonna get way in there? play to it. No, can't do much with that. To work past it. So I gotta get those two set screws down there. Well, let's give it a go. Handy dandy Allen key extension device here. I mean, you just have to break these loose a little bit and we're cooking. Big. Let's try this one. Oh boy. I have a lot of Allen keys somewhere in my house. This one's going to be too small, I think. If I get it in there. Oh man. Feels like it's too small. Darn. Okay, so I got to deal with this somehow. Let's take out the transformer here. Oh, right. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> I totally forgot what I'm doing. Got to find an Allen key. Oh, my. Okay, let's try this. It's got it. Okay, that's one. supposed to happen. There. Now. Still. So there's a bracket I have to remove. Oh my gosh. Right. So that's the uh, Allen key I just turned and I separated those pieces and now that metal bracket has to come off. It looks like maybe it's held by those screws down there. That's what it looks like. Looks like two screws hold it. Two screws, the bracket comes off. Oh my gosh, there's a lot to do here. Okay, let's see if it'll come out now. Bracket and all. Where's the capacitor I'm after? I don't see one in there. Those are all... Hmm. So here's how this works. Oh, I said it was turning a coil. I'm not actually turning a coil. You're driving a slug inside this coil. And there's limits. this too far the slug will bind in the uh, in the tube when you turn it farther the tube will then spin and it'll rip the wires off in there and 
that's what had happened to this one when I first got this radio. And believe it or not, I managed to get this part out, fix it, and stick it all back in there in my college dorm. <laughs> I actually lived in a student co-op, a very, very large, the largest student co-op in North America, in Toronto. Well, I don't know. There's probably nothing here I should do anything to, except put it all back in now. <laughs> Son of a gun. doing this, but I did. It's just fine. And there starts a bind there. Now there's supposed to be some metal stops. A little pin sticking out somewhere in this deal. I don't see where they might have been. And there's a brass fitting in there. That's is turning independent of the, uh, that's a little strange. This doesn't really matter. Well, well you can turn this a long ways. So, oh look, the spring, they've turned it so far now, the spring has come out of its little clippy holes. Another thing that can happen if you turn this too far. Well, there's a whole alignment procedure for getting this into the right uh, position, but normally this is trapped in a 180 degree range. Tricky business here. Um, I'm really disappointed there's no capacitor. What happened to the 0.02 capacitor? It was shown to be in the can. One, one of these are 0.02. Really? Would that be 0.02? Let's see what I can find. I can find out more about this. And let's, let me look in the manuals and see what I can find out about it. Okay, so here's the image of this here. Uh, you can see it looks exactly the same. These two, those two, this one, this one, this big one, big one. Wait a minute. What's that? C-130. There's no C-130 here. What happened to it? R-76 and R-77. There they are. L-46. There it is. What happened to C-130? I certainly didn't remove it. It's never been here. So th this is a little different than what's being shown in the manual. C-130. Let me take a look at that. And also, uh, there's no 0.02 capacitor in here. I couldn't find one. There's no, no 0.02. It's definitely not on the bottom. So I'm running into, again, circuit variations. It's just getting even weirder here. So this is the can. That's the coil inside. That's, that's this guy here. When you see two capacitors in parallel. One of them is the C130, the one that would be up here. And the other one is C131. I'm going to guess it's this one. Well, what happened to C130? What's the deal with this anyway? Why, why parallel? Then why not just use one single larger capacitor? What is going on here? So I don't know. And 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 uh, and and C one thirty is the point zero zero two, I think. Is that right? Am I right? Did I say it right? Let me look. Uh, I've done a little more research on this. I might not have taken this out uh, because it's clear to me now the 0.02 capacitor, which I thought was inside the can with this, is actually outside connected to this terminal in this radio. And I replaced it already. A little hard to see, but it's this, it's this yellow one back here. That's it. Goes to ground. Brand new 0.02. Um, 
So I'm kind of in an interesting situation here. I've removed all this. What has happened to the uh, resistances and other stuff in here? Uh, so I, I'm going to poke around a little bit and just... I have, I have a chance to make some measurements here that once the uh, uh, circuit's all back installed, you can't make those same measurements anymore. So I better get some use out of the fact that I've extracted that transformer. I think I'm zeroing in on the problem. Let me show you something here. So if you see off of this, well, let's just back up. Here's the 6AL5 rectifier. The output of the rectifier is heading this away through this resistor and it goes through a series of capacitors and resistor filter. It finishes here. This capacitor is doing an entirely different job. It finishes here. From here there are two white wires. You see them disappearing to this cable. I'm pretty sure one of them is this white wire. This wire is not connected. This wire is not connected. This is getting no feed. This is where the 51 volts is converted to 10 in this voltage divider. There's nothing here. There's nothing on this white wire. Now we're going to look in the radio. And we're going to look, where are we going to look here? Let me just get my head straight. We're going to look right here at what's happening right here. OK, let's go look. OK. Right here is right under this clip. Let me just there, I'm feeding a little bit of DC power into the radio to help with tracing. This is the point. There should be two white wires. There's one coming out. Okay. There's one coming out and heading this way in the bundle as shown, and I'm pretty sure it shows up over here at the uh, at the RF control. Where's the one going up here? What happened to it? That's a good question. Is it? I don't know where it is. It's, so it's in this bundle somewhere. <laughs> um, so that's where I'm at. The wire is missing from here to here. Now, I mean, the wire's there. It, it's in the radio, right? It's coming down off of uh, this pin here. It's, it's this wire here. So that's the one I, I gotta kind of find the other end of it. <laughs> what did I do with it? Maybe I hooked it up to something else. Maybe I put it on the ground, on a ground connection, or did something stupid like that. That's what I'm hunting for now, but I think that is the problem. Before anybody asks, how did the radio get this way? It's probably me. It's gotta be me. Um, so there should be a wire, I believe, running from here into this bundle, following this bundle up, coming out of the bundle. This is it right here and going up to this location where it meets up with the first of the two resistors that split the 50 volts into split split it down into 10 volts or create a 10 volt spot should be a wire from here to here I have an ohmmeter there though I just knocked the wire off briefly you'll see it comes up to around 160 okay so if the wires there this would read zero there's no wire there. Why would it read anything other than open, just open circuit? I've got the answer. 160. Remember that number. So if we look here, I guess that's, hopefully that's legible enough. The wire is running from this point, the output of this power supply. The, the, not, yeah, the wire that's missing, or appears to be missing, runs over to here. I have clip lead here. I have a clip lead there, the voltmeter in between, and that's reading 160 ohms. Look, 80 ohms, 20 ohms, that's 100,000 ohms. Back up this way, 1,000 ohms, 50 ohms. So there's your 160 up this way. So it's proving there's no wire here. So where'd the wire go? because I see it leaving. I can see it leaving out of here. It's one, one, one of these wires. <laughs> one of these wires here. Goes into the bundle, never to be seen again. I have looked as hard as I can in amongst all these wires, thinking that the cut end of it must have just kind of slipped back in here. 
You know, another possibility is, uh, duh, I've hooked it up to something else. So here, here's the other white wire. It's, it's definitely white. Whitish. Um, that's where I'm at. So what I'm considering now is why don't I just run a wire? Just run a wire from here up to where it's supposed to go. You know, just install the missing wire. And the, my hesitancy on that is, well, I guess I could cut this other end of the wire up here and then just abandon the wire. Whatever happened to it, happened to it. You know, that's probably a smart move. That's probably the way to go. Install my own wire. How sure am I of all this? Pretty sure, but I think maybe a clip lead would be in order here. Um, clip lead and a small click, click clip lead, and I can supply the 50 from my uh, my my shop supply. Not turn the radio on. That's a good idea. Okay, I'm get this thing all set up to see to try to prove if my hypothesis is valid. Okay, I think I'm ready for a test here. Let's just go over what I've done. So on this wire is going to come 50 volts. 50 volts, the negative side is going right on the plates, I think, plates, I think, plate of the, uh, the output of the uh, 6AL5 rectifier here. So it should be just putting the voltage that should be there, putting it there. 50 volts, should run through here, travel on here, come up to this point, and I have a clip lead ready to hook up my voltmeter here to make a measurement, and C10. I want to put 50, C10, and then I'll probably want to run the radio. God, i got to put this crazy thing back in. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I wish I hadn't taken that out now. Oh, well. At least, at least I, know, I know the truth of it. So the first thing I want to do, though, is make sure I've got 50 volts down here. So I'm going to read it in here. Try anyway. Something like that. And then we're going to set it up for 50. Okay, let me get on here. Okay. So I watch that meter now. Doesn't yeah, it should be fifty. We should do it with fifty. I'm watching the current flow on my power supply. There is no current flow. I believe I am raising the voltage of a bunch of grid circuits. There's no current. Okay, so there we have 50 volts, just about exactly on there. Oh, look at that. Okay, now is it 10 on the end of this? I'm in the wrong spot. Wait a minute. You know what? I'm reading. Okay, so 50 drops through these resistors gives you 30, I guess, left at this point. I don't actually have this clip on the right right spot here to read the, uh, the 10 should be here. This should be 10. Show me 10. They're showing me 6. What are you showing me 6 for? No, it's not supposed to be 50 on the plates. It's 50 at this out point, at this output. So I, I've done this wrong. Okay, so it's good, that's good, that's good. This is all good. We want 50 here, not 27. Still zero current coming from the supply. 50 volts. 51 is the actual number. Okay, everybody, cross your fingers. You see minus 10. Look at that. So you realize, do I realize that, you know, this was a very early fault. I, I blew this within months of having this radio, I think, and blew up the power supply. Six months later, I had it working again. From that point on, this wire's been missing in this radio. And all these years I've been using it. What's this 10 volts do anyway that I, I got along without it? Did I get along without it? just kill this before we get into trouble. Okay, I'm going to answer that. I'm going to investigate that question. How, what's this 10 volts doing anyway? Uh, how did I get along without it? 
Well, it looks like there's two tubes that get a 10 volt fixed bias. So here's the 10 volts. So one line goes up, goes into here, and works its way around to the grid of the 455 IF gate. IF gate. This has to do with when you're switching from single conversion to double conversion. This, this, this tube's involved here in some way. We follow the other wire. It comes all the way, all the way over to here. Am I still on camera? Over. All the way to here, and then up it goes. Up it goes. Heavy filtering. And then it goes onto the grid of the IF driver. Driver detector. So those two tubes conceivably have had bad biasing. I think, you know, one volt when it's really looking for minus, or minus one volt when it's looking for minus ten. I really don't know what's been floating on those things. And so anyway, um, surely the radio has not been working as well as it could. So I've got to put this circuit back in now. That's going to take a while before I can continue with this uh, experimenting and operating the radio. I think this is it for today, though, because, uh, my gosh, it's almost 3 o'clock here. Uh, I think I've had my fill for today. So I got somewhere. That's great. I'm pretty sure I've nailed the problem down. Pretty sure. Thanks a lot for watching.